Hi, good afternoon everybody. Uh, Greg here with the Caddis Fly Shop, Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Uh, I'm going to be tying up a fly that I use for um, barred surf perch. I also use this fly occasionally for calico bass. It's a variation of a Crazy Charlie Christmas Island special uh, fly essentially. I'm going to be tying it in orange and tan today using Crystal Flash. As you can see, this fly is very productive. Um, it just crushes it, and you'll want to tie a few of these uh, because in the salt water, they just get banged up both by the fish and just in the surf, going back and forth across the sand, they get chewed up fairly quickly. I'm tying an orange and tan today. I really like the orange. I would do orange and brown. I would do brown and tan, but orange is a very productive uh, color for salt water. And, um, it's a great little fly. Um, follow along, here we go. I'm using a 2546 today, Daiichi, size six. You can tie these in size fours as well. Uh, pinch the barb right there. I just use my vise. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the vise. I'm using size large, B chain, it's silver. And you can use black if you want it to. But as you can see, once it goes through the cycle of sand a few times, it loses its color anyways. So that's why it's a good idea to tie quite a few of these, uh, simply because they get banged up. I use some big old pliers for my bead chain. I used to use scissors, but it really does ruin your scissors. So just grab some pliers. I'm using a 70 denier. Now you can use mono, you can use a six aught, you can use, you know, whatever, 140. I'm using this because this is the only color that this uh, burnt orange comes in in UTC. I love this stuff. Uh, maybe you saw some of my carp flies. I was using this as well. I'm gonna start my thread about an eye width behind the eye. I'm gonna lay down just a little bump here. And this little bump, I'm gonna kind of make a little cradle where just literally right in between here, I have just a little gap. And that gap's going to be used to keep those B chain eyes in position. B chain eyes, I'm going to set them on. I'm going to do about three or four wraps across, like, like so. And then I'm going to start doing figure eights. But before I do figure eights, I'm going to do an X pattern over the top, about another three to four turns. And then figure eights. And I'm going to lay down quite a few of these. Came and come underneath. And then a couple more X patterns. This is really to hold this in, and I am going to glue this as well. Saltwater flies, I do recommend gluing them. Uh, for this particular fly, I'm just using a, a, a like a zappa gap. I'm just using super glue. But you definitely want to glue your eyes down, otherwise they're just going to spin on you all day. This glue is a little old, guys, as you can see. But I'm just going to put a little bit right there. Doesn't take a whole lot. I'm also going to be gluing the body on this today. But if you don't, these are just gonna turn and it's just gonna frustrate you. After I put down a little bit of glue, I do a couple more figure eights or X's and I really lock that down underneath. And then I'm gonna bring my thread back <coughs> to the barb. The main component of this fly is crystal flash. I'm using two different colors today. I'm using hot orange and tan. I'm gonna take three strands of both colors. All right, so I took about three strands of orange, three strands of tan. I'm gonna cut off those ends right there so I get a nice even surface. And um, this is gonna be the tail. So I'm gonna grab myself a couple, about an inch. I'm gonna pinch wrap that right there, right above the barb, come back. Then I'm gonna fold this back onto itself. Right above the barb there, come back up, and I'm going to bring my thread all the way back to the eyes, right there. Now, as you can see, I doubled up the tail to make it a little fuller. I'm going to cut it about the length or the gap of the hook here, about there. And you want to hold on to that crystal flash because we're going to use this pretty much for the entire, pretty much the entire fly, guys. This is the body and the tail, and also a wing. You can see I got some nice colors there. 
tans, oranges. This looks great. Then I'm going to take those strands again right behind the eye sphere, pull them back. I'm going to really lock those in, and then I'm going to do touching wraps with my thread all the way back to that tail. And once I get there, I'm going to come back up to the front. And in front of the eye. So I'm going to lay down a little bit of thread there. Now I'm going to get all those crystal flashes nice and taut. And I'm going to use my rotary function here. Touching wraps all the way up to those eyes. Just like so. Pull that down if you need to. Or you can use a cradle if you have one. Okay, once I get there, I'm going to stop with the rotation and I'm going to do a couple of figure eights across those eyes. And then I'm going to do a couple of nice locking thread turns down, really lock those down. Once those are down, I'm going to go ahead and cut that out of there. Okay, we're still holding on to that because we're going to be using that for an underwing. But before we do that, I am going to do a couple of nice, really tight wraps here to really lock that crystal flash down. And then I'm going to turn my fly around in my vise because I get a little bit more room to work with here. And there's where I'm at. All right, so now I'm going to use that crystal flash for the underwing. And I'm going to double it up like I did the tail. So I'm going to just kind of find in between there. I'm going to lay it on one side, on top, one or two wraps. Then I'm going to take the rest of that, and I'm going to kind of spread that out on the top there. And a couple of nice wraps, just like so. Now I'm going to cut this the same length as the tail in the back. And there we go. Looks pretty good. All right, now I wanted some contrast, and so I found this brush that happened to be orange. But you could also use things like pair of post wing. One thing I really enjoy about fly tying is improvising with different materials. You do not have to have the exact materials, okay? I really like this brush. Um, I don't even know what kind of brush this was. I believe it was like a streamer brush. But I'm just gonna cut, cut a little bit of fibers off that brush. I'm gonna keep them even. Now this particular wing, I don't want this going all the way back. I do this for contrast, but I also give it to give it. <clears throat> I also put this here for a little bit of support, so when I put the crap fur on, it props it up a little higher. But I want this basically just to cover the hook point, like so. I'm gonna put that on right there, loose wrap after we cut it, and then just make sure that's good and propped up. And then I'm just gonna as I hold that nice tight wraps. There you go. So far, you can see, I don't go as far back as the crystal flash. The pr pretty much this is for contrast and to give it a little bit of support when I put on the craft fur. This is just tan craft fur. Now this is gonna go a little longer to the length of the crystal flash the tail. And I really don't take that much. I take maybe about half a pencil, if that, length or width, you know. Uh, no, you don't need a whole lot, okay? And I'm going to cut that out low. And I'm going to pull out under, all that under fur. Believe it or not, this crap fur has all that stuff underneath as well. I'm going to cut a nice flush uh, surface, just like that. And this stuff will trim anyways, but I'm going to come in right on the side again. There, I'm going to grab that crapper and get it onto the top. And before I do anything, I'm just going to kind of make sure it's evenly spaced on the top here, not leaning so far over to one side. And I can usually just adjust that with my fingernail, like so. You can see there I spread it out a little bit more. And once I get there, I'm going to really start cranking down some nice hard turns, make a nice head.
You could do it now or you could do it later, but this crap fur, I'm going to kind of stagger the cut. But I want it about as long, maybe slightly longer than the crystal flash. And I just kind of go like this. Done. That's it right there. Essentially, your fly is done. And as you fish this, it's really going to get beat up, okay? I can't stress enough how much saltwater flies get beat up, and that's why you want to tie quite a few of them. I'm going to then do two, four to five whip finish, finish turns just to really secure everything up front here. And uh, great fly for surf perch. They love the orange. They love the tan. So I figured why not give them both those colors. And um, there's the fly, guys. Now I'm going to take that same glue. I'm going to glue the body, glue the head. Um, and that fly is ready to go. As you can see, it's got a nice tan tail, got a nice little orange underbody there, and of course all that crystal flash as well. Very successful fly. You can see after a few turns in the water, it gets beat up. Once you get quite a few fish on there, it gets beat up. Keep fishing that though, okay? I believe the more this fly gets beat up, the better it fishes. Not only for perch, but I would also, like I said, I use this also for uh, calico bass. I usually use a full sink line when I'm fishing for perch in the surf. Um, I'll cast 30 to 40 feet out right in the surf. I'll let this kind of just drift and I'll do very, very slow strips to kind of get it to jig a little bit. And um, yeah, it's a great fly. Um, give it a shot, time in different colors. Uh, make sure you use glue on these things, okay? I'm going to glue this up still.